I'm going to talk about the personal data monitoring service in the case of data breach in Southeast Asia. So um, since the beginning of this year, well, actually, uh, I would like to um, give you a brief background about um, this a bit. So um, this is not going to be like a very tech tech session, but um, looking at the relationship between the technology and um, human rights and personal data protection, which is a topic that um, uh, gained attention very much in Thailand at the moment because um, the introduction of the G GDPR, um, the law on the personal uh, data protections in the European Union, that was introduced um, a few years ago. So um, since the beginning of 2019, um, there are actually two major data breaches um, that happened at the regional level of Southeast Asia. So. Um, the first one that I'm going to talk about uh, today is the case of Sephora, which is uh, the cosmetic retailer that um, I hope that you know about them. So um, give you the background a bit. So the Sephora data breach involved around 3 million individual personal data that have an online account with Sephora. So that means if you ever purchase like um, cosmetics, skincare online, so that means you are one of those 3 million. And it affects customers in eight country in Asia and Pacific. So five, um, five countries in Southeast Asia, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, and Singapore. And three countries outside our region, which is um, Hong Kong, New Zealand, and Australia. So what happened after the data breach happened was that um, Sephora offered the personal data monitoring service to um, only four countries um, that are affected, which is Singapore, Hong Kong, New Zealand, and Australia. Um, you can, um, after I say this, you might notice that um, it's kind of a discrimination because the incidents happen the same. Um, the people that are affected belong in the same data breach, um, belong to the same database, things like that. So the personal data monitoring service that um, Sephora offered to the customer was that um, it's claimed to be, okay, I'm gonna show you this first. So this is um, from the Australian Sephora website. How do I sign up for the personal data monitoring service? So um, you can click on this link at that time, and then they give you um, the password, the code, to use this kind of service, which is for you to scan whether where your leaked data go, even in the dark web, according to the claim. But this is a Sephora Thailand. Um, is where are you offering me a free personal data monitoring service? At the same time as it happened, so it said that local regulatory requirement prohibit the service from being um, offered in your market. So that's why we think that this is like a, um, a, a form of discrimination. So as I said before, as I mentioned a little bit earlier about this, so the personal data monitoring service, it was offered by Sephora partner called Experian. So um, as we saw in the previous slides, the reason that the company gave to, the, to those that do not get the service is because of the local law that doesn't allow it to happen, but actually, uh, Experian only operate mainly in those first world country only. So those um, four countries only that were um, that get um, those kind of service. So they do not provide any kind of service in the country in in any country ex in Southeast Asia except Singapore. So um, I actually wonder whether is it. Personal data monitoring service that Sephora offer might be beneficial in terms of um, we know where our leaked data go. And, um, but Experian, actually, if you are a general data, uh, if you are a general customer, you have to pay a very high fee in order to use that service. So there are sites that offer leaked personal data tracking like that for free. Um, according to the package actually, but at some extent you can use um, that service for free. So there are, have I been pwned, have I been sold, and the hash. So these um, this three 
three sides. Um, it's like it's offer you. It's like this. So you can like enter email address or password, and you can see like okay where your where your um, email address or the password that you use for that email address went to things like that. So. Um, what happened with these um, websites are that um, usually they have database, leak database store in in um, in their own database, and usually database are Western based. So usually they do not have um, the leak database that occur in Southeast Asia region or um, in countries in um, at the national level. Like when we we realized that True Move um, has a data breach case last year in 2018, right? So this side they don't have anything like that because they don't have like a um, the data breach that the data the database that. Um, Belong to this this our region um, store on on the, on the database, except when it's at the global scale, like Tumble or things like that. So this is um, you can see um, this company do not belong to like Thailand or any country in Southeast Asia at all. So this is the database that um, have I been pwned store. Um, when the data breach happened, companies that experience data breach in Southeast Asia are not held accountable. Um, the recent case is Lion Air, where um, it's three subsidiary like Melindo, uh, Thai Lion Air, and um, also um, Batik Air, which is Indonesia based. Um, it's only Melindo Air that issue a statement because they have um, they fly to. Europe countries, so that's why um, they kind of enforce, um, they kind of enforce law and statement and to um, show some responsibility according to the GDPR because they have to um, comply with the law. Um, so, actually, I wonder wh whether the personal data monitoring service is a tool that is actually useful because we. There actually have been some criticism about this service. First, how secure of the leak database that's stored in this website? For example, if the hacker want to hack this database, um, if it's not secure enough, of course it can happen. Sometimes the service is not free, which creates discrimination. For example, um, if you are not well off in terms of like financial resources, things like that. So. Um, yeah, that can also um, create discrimination. Why is it legal for this website to store millions of leaked database? So that's also another question. Um, also, individual usually cannot do much after they find that leaked information. For example, um, we are often told in the case of data breach that we have to change our password. But usually the effect is long term as it's beyond the um, individual capacity after it's happened. So here, this is from the hash. So as I search for Sephora, so you see like in the red circle, how can I protect myself or remove my data? So actually, they just said that um, you can contact them and they will remove your information from that database only, but not in the public platform where the leak information appear. So um, as I said before, usually when it happens, it's beyond the effect individual capacity. Changing password, changing a password is not like a, a complete comprehensive solution to handle the breach. Um, so in the case where the breach happened, um, the company should be held responsible in terms of they need to consult the cybersecurity uh, company in terms of the removal of the leaked data that go across the website, um, including the dark web as well, um, investigate the incident to know the cause and how, and after they learn um, the flaw in their database, um, what can they do in terms of to prevent uh, the same incident to happen again in the future. And 
also in the law aspect, there's also in need of a strict law at the same level as the general data protection regulation to take place to hold this company responsible. In terms of Thailand, I know that um, the Personal Data Protection Act just has been adopted um, in May this year, but it will come into full effect one year after this, which is May next year. But um, um, there's still a lot of legal loopholes in terms of that, and I just doubt whether um, these data protections act, whether it's going to work if the incident like this happen. So um, actually, I think that in terms of human security in this region, there should be like a, a unifying data protection act um, that country in Southeast Asia um, adopted the same like the same data protection act where the 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 meaning of the personal data protection where the meaning of what is sensitive data is interpreted the same and um, so it's going to be less um, discrimination when this kind of incident happen so um, the question to discuss here, if you want to discuss, is whether do you think that the personal data monitoring service tool that is available in the market is any useful, if you're familiar with it, of course, and are there any website that offer personal data monitoring that you would like to recommend, and do you think that there is a chance to develop like a personal data monitoring service tool that can offer service works like search engine like Google where you don't have, where we don't have to store like, you know, the database, uh, the leaked database in in um, on the sites. So any question? Has anybody got any question? Yes. So uh, my question is, uh, having uh, such uh, this tune, uh, personal data monitoring service tune, is it's a good idea. Uh, but the, I think the big question is how we can trust the company or, or, uh, or um, any organization providing the tune uh, because um, if we need this tune, so it means we need like a maybe, um, maybe non-profit organization yeah. to, to provide the tune and then how much we can trust that they can um, store our information like a um, safely and privately, not like uh, uh, sell any uh, like uh, our information to to uh, like uh, any 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 companies. Mm -hmm. that, that's the questions, right? A oh, comment. <laughs> uh, my question is, um, who will be the owner of of uh, this data personalization monitoring tool? It um, would be like a company or. Um, Organization or non-profit organization or for those that um, those existing um, 
website that has been running, like have I been pwned or have I been sold or um, dehash, they usually, um, some of them are non-profit, like have I been pwned, it's um, offer your, um, it's offer the service for free and um, it's running on like a, on, I'm not sure whether it's a non-profit organization, mm -hmm, but um, the guy that has been behind it, he, he doesn't accept any money uh -huh, from like from the other sources why he's doing this i don't know whether he has like side business or not uh for other sites sometimes they are company that doing cyber security not doing cyber security um in terms of like experience for example the sephora offer that one is a company but they offer like um, they offer many services for example like um in terms of the identity theft um yeah, they offer service uh, in order to combat that as well, but the fee is very high in order to use that. And there are also, um, like Dehash, Dehash offer you some kind of package. For example, like, okay, um, if you want to use the, uh, the service for free, there are these options. Um, there are these options for you that is available. And if you pay for this certain amount, you can do more, things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's like mixed. So uh, my um, another question is, I think is it better to to have like a preventive a mechanism like a to uh, because if you look at the website like a, uh, uh, have I been pawn mm -hmm. uh, most the website that have been hacked is the government website mm -hmm. so uh, um, is it better to 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 provide the knowledge to um, like a to the government sector that they need to provide uh, like a secure protocol, like yeah. a HTTPS, uh, rather than uh, like a, um, having such a tool to uh, monitoring the data after we have been hacked. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I agree. Um, anyone else would like to give feedback or would like to ask questions? Yes. Okay, during the beginning of the session, you mentioned that the personal monitoring service doesn't really have Southeast Asian countries data. Mm -hmm. The reason is that they are not accountable. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Uh, so um, the company in this region. No, usually it's because um, so there are there are. Okay, there are two causes. Uh, for example, like um, in terms of Sephora. Um, Four country that affected, except Singapore in Southeast Asia, um, they are not. the The only, the only thing that Sephora told them uh, to do was to change the password. Uh -huh. Not offering the personal data monitoring service like the rest of the country that got affected. And I think that when they mentioned that it's um, because of the legal matter. Um, I think that it's it's um, the reason that it's not like it's not legitimate uh, to to provide, and um, um, I think that they can do more in terms of like uh, protecting personal data of people. But I just don't know whether like because they don't want to or because I don't know. And um, when it comes to the website that exists in in the market, like have I been pwned or dehash? Because these company are actually operate like in the Western country, like in Europe or in the US, and sometimes um, the data breach happen very often, uh, happen like all over the world, uh -huh. and um, sometimes these people um, they just you know, don't understand 
or do not monitor what happened or what's going on in terms of the data breach in Southeast Asian country, or even like, um, well, let alone at the national level, like in Thailand in terms of like to move edge, or um, as I remember, I think um, Lazada uh, also experienced some kind of like data breach a few years ago. Um, Grung Thai Bank as well also experienced data breach like um, uh, last year or something like that. But then there's no, um, there's not much things that um, mentions about this. Also, um, the media they don't they don't talk much about the incidents as well. And I think that the reason that the company can get away with it is because. Um, First, there's no strict law that held them accountable, and also the public understanding as well. Um, usually, this kind of thing, the data breach, when it happens, it doesn't have immediate effect. It's like it doesn't, we don't get the immediate effect in the way that we live our life, unless or until like our account has been hacked. Like, for example, our Facebook has been hacked because we happen to use the same password as those account was leaked, something like that. Uh -huh. At that moment, we realize, oh, okay, I'm the one that got affected. What can I do? So it doesn't have like immediate effect. So um, when it doesn't have immediate effect, so people are kind of like, ah, oh, it's okay. Uh -huh. And um, when there's no strict law enforcement on that issues as well, the company are like, they usually get away with it. And when the media doesn't push for them to take some kind of responsibility. So it's kind of like they wait until like, you know, times goes by and yeah. And wait until everything goes quiet, things like that. Mm -hmm. And it usually happens all the time in this region, which is sad. Yeah. Th this indicates that the cyber security in this region is really bad. Yes. <laughs> yes. There actually is an article on the ASEAN Post, I think like, last month talking that Southeast Asia is actually like a hub for hackers in terms of like, you know, stealing database, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, it's actually, it's sad because um, the government in countries in this region, they just like get alert on the issues after the introductions of the GDPR only because um, it affects the countries in terms of economic and business opportunity because the, GT the GDPR actually um, forcing um, the company outside of the European uh, region to taking care of the uh, personal data of the European citizen that live outside of the uh, European Union as well. So um, that's the thing. So they just, they just don't want to you know, lose the business opportunity instead of genuinely care about the cyber security, things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually the business that affected um, the most are like airline company, hotel company, those business like um, dealing with, you know, people from outside. Uh -huh. yeah. So that means for the company that operates mainly in Thailand, mm -hmm. there won't be any regulation like GDPR or something like that? There's, like I mentioned before, there's a Personal Data Protection Act uh -huh, that um, Thailand just passed. And also, um, at the same time, there's Cyber Security Act. So two laws together that um, Thailand just adopted May, uh, in May this year. And uh, in terms of the Personal um, Data Protection Act, it will come into full effect uh, next year in May. But um, months have passed. We haven't seen much in terms of like the government effort, in terms of like, you know, telling the business company uh, how to prepare and um, in terms of like, you know, uh, comply with the law when it's going to be uh, fully enforced. And also like, uh, there's also, I think that in this case, the business that are affected, that are the most worried, are the medium and small business. For example, we know that um, Thai people these days 
we tend to use Instagram to you know showcase the product and service. And then when we want those product or service, we have to contact the owner of the shop via like Line Messenger, right? And then after the transaction happened, we give them like our personal data for the products to be delivered. Our name, uh, phone number, and address. So it's like the question is how how do we know that those information that we gave to the vendors that run like Instagram accounts and shops like that, like micro business, online micro business, are secure or what they're gonna do with it afterwards, things like that. And um, it's worrying because sometimes those shops, like those who run the Instagram accounts, are run by just only one people, one like one single person. And the limited of the uh, there's the limitations of the law in terms of like, oh, okay, what do I do in terms of like when the law come into full effect? Like because they're gonna be fine if um, fine in terms of like you know like uh, in terms of like if the data got leaked or exposed to the public. Uh huh. Yeah, like what they can do with it as a micro business owner, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so far there hasn't been any guideline yet. Thank you. You're welcome. I think we ran out of time. And um, if you have like any more questions or want to discuss, you can reach me afterwards. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>